Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. Now in this video I want to talk about Linux kernel programming. A while back I've made a video that showcases how to set up a minimal Camu environment to test out kernels, to create minimal virtual machines in which you can test out a specific Linux kernel version, to introduce new modules to the kernel and things of the sort. Now in this video I want to continue that discussion by showcasing how you can add a system call to a Linux kernel and how to run it in Camu so that you can introduce new code within the kernel space. Now it takes an incredible amount of effort to prepare this detailed material. If you want to support my project you can subscribe to the channel, you can share this video with like-minded people and also you can support me on Patreon. I thank you very much and I wish you enjoy the video. First things first, what even is a system call and why should we want to add a new system call? Well, system calls are the main interface between user space and kernel space of an operating system. Now consider a very simple C program that prints hello world. Now if we compile and execute this program, here we get the execution hello world. We get the string hello world that is printed on the terminal. Now to make this happen, at some point our computer will have to interact with the display monitor and we'll have to write into the display monitor memory. So basically the idea is that the kernel is the software that interacts with the hardware, that interfaces us with the hardware. The kernel abstracts away all the hardware details. So we can imagine our operating system as made of user space and underneath there is kernel space. And when we want to do something in kernel space, one of the main interface is the system call interface. We have to use a system call. We call it from the user space and this is going to trigger execution on the kernel level and then the kernel tries to find the device and writes on the device memory so that we can see the output. For example, the printf function that is offered by the standard C library through the standard input output header is actually implemented through write calls, so through calls of the write function. And as we can see, the interface of write is much lower level than the interface of the printf. The printf just takes a format string and a bunch of arguments depending on the format string, while the write takes a file descriptor, such as the standard output file descriptor, the string, the sequence of bytes that we want to write, and the length, how many bytes we want to write into the specific file descriptor. Now, this write in this program, it still belongs to the user space. However, the way it is implemented is through calling a system call. So this write at the user level will call a write at the kernel level. So this one will call a write at the kernel level. So it means that the kernel must implement this system call. Now in this video I will not discuss how this jump is made, how we can call the server through system call. I will just showcase how you can add your own new custom system call to the Linux kernel codebase. And so we can get started. So the first step is to download of course the source code that we want to modify it. Now in this case I have everything under LKM example. Oh, and by the way, this code and all this material is available under Patreon support. It is present in the Git server and you get access to the Git server if you support me on Patreon. Thank you very much. So what do we have here? Here we have a bunch of uh, directories. We have the kernels directory. In this case here we have different images of the kernel. For this example, I've downloaded the 6.15 version. It's one of the, it's not the latest, but um, it's very close to the recent ones, to the recent version. So you can download the code from the cdn.kernel.org and you go into pub Linux kernel. And if you go here, you get access to the different version here and you go to 6.x. And here you get all the different versions, 6. something basically. So it is very organized. So the first thing you do is just you wget it, you download it and you compress it, you decompress it. And here you have this folder, Linux 6.15. 
and in here you have the typical uh, like trees tree directory of the linux kernel perfect so this is the first thing that you should do the next thing is going to be updating this kernel version this kernel source code to add a new system call and actually this step is broken down into three different steps first we update the system call table then we add the system call signature and then we add the system call implementation so the first thing is we must go into this file which is found in the linux root folder the linux-6.15 we go into the arc folder the architecture specific folder we go into this specific architecture which is x86 and it also works for 8664 so for 64-bit version of the architecture then we go into entry syscalls and here here we find two different files syscall underscore 32.tbl and the 64 version and right now we are just interested in the 64 version so we go into the 64 and here we have this table now this table contains the 64-bit system call numbers and entry vectors so the format is we have the number which is going to be the index of our system call the abi which is mostly going to be common the name the name of the system call and the entry point in the code for example sysread so for example we have a zero common read sysread one common write sysread and things of the sort now where do we want to add our new system call well at the end of this first table so we scroll down we scroll down we scroll down at some point there's going to be a gap and then there's going to be some kind of due to historical design error certain syscalls are numbered differently so there's going to be this end of the table now we want to write it at the end of this index at the end of this first initial table and here you can see the new one that i've added it has index 468 it has a common abi it is called custom xdump and the entry point is called the sys underscore custom underscore x dump now notice that these things are actually tab characters so there are no spaces there there are just tab characters and we can see that with white space mode here we can see the tabs so here one thing to notice well is that here i've used the number 468 why is that because in the version of the kernel that i downloaded the latest index was 467 and so i simply added one more to that and i got 468 so whatever version you download just add one to get your index for your new system call and the name of the system call is called custom xdump so this is the first thing that we must do the second thing is that we must add the signature of the function to the kernel now this signature must be added to the syscalls.h file the include file that includes all the system call this is found in the include folder under the linux so it's called include linux syscalls.h now why do we need to include this header because basically when you program in c you always have the signature of the function and then you have the implementation now if uh, different places use your function you want to include the signature so they can access the function they can see the function and then the linker at uh, compile time is going to put the implementation there it's going to link the call to the function with the actual implementation itself so this is like a typical approach in c projects and so we must go to this file so let's let's go back here let's go to the entry point of the kernel linux-6.15 and then we're going to include linux syscalls.h syscalls.h we go into this file and here we search for basically we go to the end of this file and as you can see here at the end in line 1324 i've put this ism linkage long sys custom example now if you check this file here we have a lot of other system calls a lot of other functions sometimes you even have implementation for the static inline functions but you mostly have just the signature you know you just declare the signature and, and as you can see here you have different kind of arguments depending on how many arguments the function takes also notice that uh, some arguments uh, have this uh, underscore underscore user this kind of marker and this signals that the memory is taken 
from user space. So it is user space memory. Now, why is this important to know? We will actually see in one of the future video of this series of kernel programming. But basically the idea is that when we program on kernel side, we really have to be careful on how we handle memory and on how we handle user space memory. Because the user that called us could be a malicious user. So we really must protect ourselves against malicious user space programs. But basically for this step, that was it. Just add the signature. And finally, the last step is to add the implementation. Where do we add the implementation? We add the implementation to the file sys.c found in the kernel folder. So we go, we go cd kernel, we open the sys.c file and we add at the end the custom implementation for our custom system call. Now to add the implementation, we are using this macro syscall defined at zero because uh, our system call has uh, zero arguments. We put the name of the system call and we put the implementation itself. Now, our implementation is trivial because this video, I just want to showcase how to add a new system call. In the future, we can put more complex code there. For now, the code simply prints a message and this message says, look, custom example syscall was called with an informational level like on the on the log of the kernel on the D message buffer. So basically this is it. Now if we analyze this code we will find other syscall defined and some other times we have the syscall for example define one. This is because this system call has one argument. Now in this case the first argument here is the name of the system call. The second argument is the type of the first argument of the system call and the third here is the name of the first argument. So for example, in this code, we can use info of type struct sysinfo pointer. It's a pointer to the struct sysinfo. And you can see other codes like this in the kernel. It's all very interesting stuff. Now at this point, we have modified all we had to modify. We had updated the system call, we have added the signature and we have added the implementation. The only thing that remains is to actually compile the kernel and to run it. So let's compile the kernel. We go into the main kernel folder and we do the typical steps. We make the configuration file. We specify it for KVM for like camo virtualization. And finally, we compile with make, dash, j, and proc to use multiple cores. And this can take up to 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on your hardware resources and on how fast your machine is in general. So at this point, we have the new kernel. Now, to actually use the system call, we must create a user space program that calls this new system call. And so here it is a minimal user space program that calls our newly created system call. So look at this. Here we define the sys custom exdump index, which is a 468. This must be the same as the one found in the system call table within the kernel. And then we use the syscall function offered by the standard C library. So basically what's going to happen is that the C program is going to say, I want to call syscall number 468. Then, so this is user space, kernel space is going to be like, okay, look, 468 was mapped to sys custom exdump and then it's going to find this code and it's going to execute that code. And so we have our code execution within the kernel through a new system call. So here uh, down below, you can see that basically I've created a new initramfs. So I have this image, I have this file initramfs, this folder. Now I've talked about how to create a minimal file system for the kernel using initramfs in one of the previous videos that I've that I've done on the kernel on how to set up a minimal camo environment. So I'm gonna put a link in the description that brings you there. But basically in this file here, we have this custom syscall.c. So we have this custom file that we call the new system call. Now here I've compiled it as a static binary. So with the dash static flag of GCC, this is important because in the environment it executes, it will not find the standard C library. So it must be a static executable. Now, if I execute it on my machine, it's going to say that the system call return minus one. Why is that? Because it returned error. Because in my kernel, in the host kernel, 
I don't have the system call. I don't have the system call 468. However, in the camo environment, we will, because the camo environment is going to be created with the new kernel, with the updated kernel. So at this point, we are ready for the last step of execute and profit. So we have everything. We have the updated kernel image. We have the new initramfs, which contains our new program that we want to test out. And then we just run this camo command. So we run it. We run it and we make sure that in the current path, we will find the kernel image, the busy image, and the initramfs.cpo.gz. So let's copy this camo command and let's execute it. So here now it's booting the new kernel. And at this point, we have execution over the new kernel. So we can do a bunch of stuff on it. I can do id, I am user uid0. Okay. Now, the thing that we will see within this, uh, this folder is the custom syscall binary, this binary, right? And now we can actually execute it. We execute it and look what we get. We get the message from the D message buffer. So this is printed by the kernel. This is code that is executed from the kernel and it says custom xdump syscall called. System call return zero, meaning that everything went well and there were no errors whatsoever. The same output can be found if we call the message. Here at the end, we find this custom xdump syscall called. This means that we have interacted with the kernel, we have added the system call and we have executed it. And so with this, we're able to introduce a new system call over the kernel. Now, typically, if you want to add code with the kernel, you use the module technology, which I showed in the previous video. However, I just want to make this video because it is extremely fascinating to understand how we would implement a new system call. So I hope it was fun. I hope you got something out of it. And if you want to support my project, you can subscribe to the channel or also in the Patreon. Thank you very much and to the next video.